Hi everyone, this is Shreemai from Mediva and we would be discussing something interesting. Every healthcare professional, when they step into a hospital, they should be very well aware about IV cannulation. Now, how one can be perfect in an IV cannulation? One can be good if we have a clear picture. When we know where the vein is located, what is the length of the vein and how perfectly it is aligned. For that, we need to have a clear knowledge about anatomy of vein so that we can easily put an IV cannula. Specifically for the patients who is obese or if suppose the person is dehydrated. So now without any delay, let us understand the anatomy of the vein and location of it. Let us understand the veins. As with the mnemonic, to remember CT scan. So T is for thumb. So along the thumb, there is something called a cephalic vein. So cephalic vein is this one which is running along the side. It is actually extending from the shoulder and it is going till the thumb. So this is where we are saying it is cephalic vein. So this is one of the best vein to put an IV cannula. The next one which we are going to see is called as the basilic vein which we can remember with the mnemonic BI. B is for basilic vein which is this vein which is also coming from the axilla and extending till the little fingertip. So this is the basilic vein which is there present over here. So ideally these two veins are actually perfect over this region to put an IV cannula of the gaze 18 to 22. Along with that there is a wonderful vein which is this one where we can see perfect M coming up like this. If we can observe a perfect vein of from here which is extending here and then from the fold it is going forward like this. So this is actually called as medial cubital vein in which this area is the best area to take blood samples. So this is the best area to take blood samples but it is not at all a best area to put an IV cannula because it is a place of joint and it is a not a good comfortable position as the patient has to restrict when we are putting a tonique we can see certain bulged vein those bulged vein can be simultaneously used for putting an IV cannula there are certain branches which is coming out from cephalic vein this are the accessory cephalic veins so these are the accessory cephalic veins which if it is very prominent these veins can also be used for putting a IV cannulation a quick recap on veins of forearm. So this is about forearm. Now moving ahead about the wrist. So when we are talking about the wrist as I have already told from cephalic vein which is coming towards the thumb. So this is the cephalic vein that is coming. And towards the little finger it is the basilic vein that is extending. So this cephalic vein over here, this is the best place for putting an IV cannula. But it is only being placed or it is only being preferred in case of emergency. Because again here joint is present and it would be very discomfortable and painful for the patient when it is being placed for a longer period of time. So as we go forward, so this cephalic vein and the basilic vein, it makes over here, over the metacarpal region as a bunch of branches of veins. So this is called as actually the metacarpal veins. So over here, it is all metacarpal veins. Now these metacarpal veins, when it is branching like this, where you can see like this, Y is being present or like this, these are actually the venous arch or the dorsal venous arch that it is being forming. Here all are dorsal metacarpal veins and these are extending and forming as a dorsal venous arch. So we can see over here so if it is forming this is a dorsal venous arch that is being formed. Now in this case a vein which is going very straight this is the best vein to put an IV cannula but all the veins where the branches are being present these areas are not appropriate for putting any IV cannula because if we put IV cannula over here there is a very high possibility of puncturing the valve and it would be difficult to put an IV cannula. A quick recap on veins of dorsum of the palm. These veins further extend and it forms as dorsal digital veins. So over the digits or fingers, these are veins which extend from both the sides and it becomes dorsal digital veins. So to quickly revise, that is here over the dorsal metacarpal vein, 
where the veins are very straight prominent without any bulge or without any folds because any bulge over a particular area signifies that there is a presence of walls other than that the cephalic vein or the basilic vein over the forearm the cephalic vein and the basilic sorry the cephalic vein and the basilic vein along with that any veins which is very bulged clear and which is having a good diameter can be selected for putting any iv cannula in continuation even though the veins which is present over the wrist can be prominent at times but we don't take them as over here there are multiple minute veins that would be present other than that there are nerves that are present because of which giving any or putting any iv cannula over the wrist area is always avoided i'm sure now you're very much clear with the location of the vein in our hands as well as lower limbs or legs so for such more interesting videos please like share and subscribe mediva